Okay. If, we, okay. if we have time, we'll do questions. Thanks. Then we'll ask the rest of the parking lot. Yeah. Like I said, the burger joined the parking lot. Yeah, I've got that battery that I've been for a while. It's relatively new. I have a hard quit here at 9 o'clock, so. Okay, audio files. I was cheap. I wanted a digital voice gear and a contest logger. N1MM has that. It's actually easier in N1MM than doing CW. I won't go into the details. But I've set it up to do CQ contests. My call sign, the contest exchange, which obviously is different for each contest. And I record that. Thank you. QRZ, QSL, and a few other things, some common things. Uh, Audacity is an open source and free uh, voice recorder and editing program. Download it, and you hook up a microphone to your computer. I like to use the same headset mic that I would use for contesting, so the mic is the same. Record your audio. Record it at pretty high fidelity. You know, and I'll go through, and I'll just say, you know, alpha, alpha, three kilo, alpha, alpha. Go do that three or four times. And I'll start listening and find whichever one sounds the best. And within Audacity, you can say, I want to just save this piece of this recorded information and give it just a little bit of lead time, just a little bit of lag, dead air time on the thing. I want to try to get that in pretty tight. Um, there's a feature in the filter, out of the filtering, called normalization, you can select that, and that'll take all those wild things and kind of get your audio level pretty even to set up for your rig. Save a file, save it as the call sign, 59 New Jersey. 5905 for the CQ zone, whatever you need to do, CQ contest your file names. And when you get to the entry window, these are the actual memory buttons or the function keys that'll send out your messages, CW, data modes if you're running Grady or PSK, or voice. You right click on any of these 12 of these. Whoops. Um, you'll bring up this editor window where you can say you have two banks of messages. If you're running or if you're just working, you know, search and pass. It's set up pretty much the same. F1, I want CQ to be on the button caption. I use this little macro called operators. It goes on 883K. You can have three or four people have their own voice files on the computer. They sit down at the computer, they answer quickly what their call sign is, and it'll automatically go to the right directory with their voice files. And I have uh, PQP, which is Pennsylvania QSO Party CQ out there for three kilo. With the exchange, in this case the number sign, will automatically I have zero, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine recorded. You can send that automatically and then say in this case it's Carbon County. Blah 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 blah. Um, I do not use the ability to voice the other person's call sign, because if you're really patient and really good at it, yes, you can create the whole phonetic alphabet. I'm not really patient to sit there and do 26 letters like that. Hmm? Yeah. Twenty-six stroke and a few other yeah. things in there. It takes a but if you're doing this for CW, it's even easier. There's a couple of special characters. Again, CQ, and I've got CQ, PQP, test. Uh, I can either use the star, but they later replaced it with this macro called my call. All the macros have to be braces before and after. So when I hit F1, we'll send CQ, PQP, test, a little bit of space between those words, A83K, A83K, go sign. Exchange for the contest, which will automatically pick out from your contest session. And the rest of these things are pretty pretty obvious as to what they what they are. Again, there's an extensive section in the manual on all the macros they support. And those are the simpler macros. They have some pretty potent ones in there. I have even begun to scratch. Okay, creating the log database. This is where N1MM differs. They set the, uh, the set the stage for later programs. N1MM uses a common data database for all of the contests you log when you operate. It does not require a log file or database per contest like CT does in write log and other programs. So for a brand new installation, you use file, new, oops, file, new database, print blank database, it'll bring it up, 
mark documents N1 and N logger plus databases, and it'll come up with a default name. You can right. uh, select that name. Has one special one here: do not use or erase blah blah blah. That's actually the, the master thing that it copies into the name you give it. It was a starting point. You can mess up, mess it up, and you have to download an updated version. I usually just say three K dish one, and then the second one dish two dish three dish four. Uh, it actually does it. They used to use Microsoft Access, and now now switched over to the database. It runs a little bit faster than Microsoft Access. They use the database in particular to protect against the program crash and the computer going down or something like that because it's transactionally get the data into the database so it protects the database. Uh, I don't know, I don't do database works, I don't know all the underlying stuff for it, but you know, there's been very few times they've had to help people really recover from a corrupted database. And if it gets so bad, it comes through the database. Right. So now you create a separate instance of contest in the database. Okay. That's how the difference is. And because you got this history information, you can get M1MM to go and look up all the information for you. To populate, you know, a bunch of typing. All right, go. Okay, final, final step, select your contest. Maybe this is the one area M1MM could really use some improvement. Uh, file, new logging database is how you get to it, but the log type or the contest name tends to be cryptic. More than once I've had to go back to the manual, I've got some weird contest to find what it is. Ah, uh, Scandinavian DS contest, you know, SDSC, okay? You know, that's the little, that's maybe my most annoying fact with the whole program, but that's the only thing I can live with that. You pop that information, you know, the start date might be two days ago, you just get the program configured ahead of time. You know, your category information, single operator, band, blah, 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 blah. In case of QSL party, that's generic, then you say what state of the, the actual Q, the QSL party in here, and it'll go to the sub stuff, sub particulars for that contest. What happens if you want to use the program in the mode itself or contest to advance the contest? Just to get the rhythm of that particular contest. That's a good question. You know, there's a lot of DS stations that do that to hold the frequency. They'll start working stations now or before they get that in the law. Oh, yeah. Who's well, that, too? But I'm yeah. thinking just some of them have You can make it, you can make multiple instances. You know, I've got probably two dozen QSO parties in my life. You know, the ones I've done over the years. Do another QSO. Another start date. Oh, I got you. So you could do it on Thursday and then reset it to start Friday, Saturday. And those logs will sit there. They'll sit there. They'll sit there. As long as that disk is spinning and hasn't gotten corrupted. Let me, let me get to the presentation, we'll get to more questions. Uh, you can, they, they made some changes here, is that you can set up different files for uh, the macro buttons for your messages, for the CW, side and digital. If you use what's called the, uh, oh God, what's it called? Super check partial. You start typing in a call sign. You know, some piece, some hands, some DS contest stations have great memories. You start giving them uh, KD2B, he, he's already pretty sure it's RY, RX, or RP. He's worked with so many times in the past. Mm -hmm. You know, <clears throat> SuperCheck partial gives you all the recent contesters back in the past, who have been in contests in the past five years. So it'll start coming up as hints. Uh, I don't do a lot of CW. Outside, you know, outside of contest, and I don't probably ever run in CW. I was doing a little bit once. That stuff was coming up, and I gave it. Yep, that is blah blah blah. So I'm not a great CW model. Well, somehow I got the SCC CW. I don't know how I actually finished that. But that's where you use it. That's the, the what they call the master. They have that file broken down to only US stations, only DS stations, only uh, a few other VHFers typically, such so you can switch to a different file with only a narrower set of data. Okay, entering QSOs. You're ready to get going. So entering it is very straightforward. It uses pretty much Windows field maneuvering, so if you're very used to just flipping back and forth, changing between things, it works exactly as it does in any other Windows application. Except, it really, it really prefers if you use the space bar instead of the tail. Because M1MM is smart. Almost all contests, it's 5.9 is the signal exchange. But I can finally figure out the call sign. If you're 5.9 in that instant, I figured out your call sign. We can argue about that, but let's not. 
So if the thing shows five nines here, and you hit the space bar, and you just need to get their CQ zone or something like that, it's going to skip those fields with the space right. bar. You don't have to answer that equation. It's probably five nine. Of course, every now and then you get a label with, oh no, you're a four by two and such. You got to tab to the field and enter that information. Um, you want tab to, to the field? You can tab to the okay. field. Both tab, gotcha. shift tab. You can Thank click you. on the field. All that works normal. But the space bar is intelligent and will jump over the fields that are not normally needed. <laughs> you can click on the buttons to send any of the macros that you've set up voice, CW, digital. Uh, when you're all done entering all the fields, you hit enter, you will log the information. Now, there was a big hubbub balloon several years ago. They said, ah, I went MM had a bug in it. It didn't log. So a lot of people realized they were un unknowingly using a feature in M1MM. You're trying to work this guy. You're calling him for five minutes. You said, well, let me move on. You turn off frequency more than 300 hertz. That's at the full. You can actually change that. It will automatically delete the entry not log it for you. And it'll put a little note down here saying not such and such a station was not logged. But it's really small unless you're really looking for it, you don't know. So, uh, you can turn that off if you want. You can set it to 500 kilohertz. You can set it to 250 kilohertz, whatever you want. Okay, so you, you would enter the call before you worked them. If that's and what you do. And then hit enter. Got it. If that's what you're doing. Yep, yep, yep. Yeah, so let's say if you're in my operating system, you are, you might have turned a fast call to the other side to listen. Inadvertently hit the VFO on the first one, you can still wipe them out. You can turn that off. Is what you're saying. You can turn it off, right? Yeah. yeah. That function button. In that other functions and function keys, you'll find a whole bunch of other switches, including what they call the big guns. You, 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 you can spot them, though, right? And it'll, 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 you can spot that call and then it'll remember where that frequency yep. was. And you can go back. What do you do? Hit spot down here? You can hit the spot button, which will actually send it out to tell that. So oh, the entire world will see it. Why would you do that to yourself? I know. <laughs> or, <laughs> or, or, or you can hit store, which will store it in your local right. um, yeah, store. If you see it, but not everybody oh, else. Until you work it, and then you can let the rest of the world know. Yeah. Store might be the button. Yeah, and that's what I usually do. Okay. So that's pretty much the quick setup using it and such. I'll flip over to show you the program. <clears throat> If you belong to FRC, and everybody in here can make at least one contact an hour in a contest, expect you to, and you can do at least two of the four major contests a year, expect you to apply to FRC. Dan and I will sign your applications. You don't even have to make a meeting anymore. It used to be a requirement that was dropped a while ago. But in particular, a lot of help can be had. And there are no dues. And there are no dues. Voluntary contributions only. You belong to FRC in particular, a lot of help can be had on the FRC email reflector. One of the authors is on the reflector and will and answers questions. I actually answer a lot of the questions. He kind of likes that because I unload him. He can concentrate on program development. But if there's a real good one, he'll jump in and answer it. Uh, as I said before, the FRC is a member of the M1MM development team. You can also, and I strongly recommend joining the Yahoo group for M1MM Plus. I, I, I belong to it. I don't even begin to try to read it. I do searching for answers every now and then. It's just a tremendous amount of information available, and all of the team is on there. There's also one or two people on the team who primarily that's their job. They answer the questions on that reflector. That's the nice thing. It's got enough people that can, you know, somebody can do real well in that media world. Hey, you want to join the team? You want to handle that? Great. They're very responsible. Yes. So, M1MM plus contest logger is extremely powerful. Uh, when you start using this thing, you realize this is professional great software. This, this software should be 120 plus or more a pop. It's great. Uh, it may seem to be a little bit difficult to set up and use, but if you approach it methodically and carefully, you will get through it. It will work. You know, add a new feature or contest. Go play with a new feature a week. You'll get it up to where you're, you can easily pretend to be a big gun station. Just minus the tower, the multiple kilowatt amps, things like that. Uh, does have a manual. People are like amazed. Oh my God, this thing has an unbelievably complete manual. And this van, and I haven't tried printing it out for a few pages of it. The van has, yeah, you print it all out. You got three stacks, three, three packages of paper for the top. And it changes every week, so. And it changes every week, so it really doesn't pay to print out much more than the function keys and you know the, the quick shortcuts. <clears throat> And 